I'm attorney Kevin Johnson, and I thought I'd say a few words about parenting agreements and divorce judgments involving children, because I have found through my many years of experience that there's a lot of misunderstanding about this. One of the things I work toward is freedom of action. That is my clients having a maximum freedom to do what they want to do. I mean, you're getting divorced or you're breaking up with the parent of, of your child. So how much do you want to be icky, sticky, bound to them? Or how much do you want to get on with your life? Right? So, I mean, if your relationship ends, be it divorce or breakup, and you don't have children together, you just go your separate ways. You, if you see them in the hallway or in the mall, you don't even, you know, don't even have to say hi if you don't want to. You can have no connection. Goodbye. Have a nice life. But when you have children, you're going to find yourself having to deal with each other because you're going to exchange the children for parenting time, as we call it in Illinois. So now what? Well, you got to have a schedule. And these schedules sometimes take a long time to hammer out. You could have a year or more of litigation and court dates while you figure out how much time you're going to have with your kids. You may come up with an, ag an agreement or a judge may have to decide, but in the end, there'll be a schedule. Now, right now I'm talking about when you reach agreement, because what happens is one side or the other has a lawyer and they'll draft an agreement and then they'll put it out there to discuss. And this is what I want you to be careful of because it has become a practice in family law to put in these paragraphs that purport to be flexible and, and freedom of action. Like, well, for example, I will paraphrase a paragraph like this. If either parent becomes aware of a special occasion, such as funerals, weddings, family gatherings, or the like, for which the child's attendance is expected or required, that parent will notify the other parent, and that parent shall not unreasonably withhold their consent to the child's attendance at that special occasion. If that kind of parenting time adjustment is made, the parent whose time is reduced shall be granted suitable and complimentary makeup parenting time. There, that sounds great, right? How can you agree? How can you disagree with that? It sounds great. If there's a special occasion, well, the child should attend a funeral, a wedding, uh, their friend's birthday party, a uh, family gathering, family reunion. So now here's the problem. In the hands of somebody who, whose motives are less than pure, you might say, that kind of language can be weaponized to essentially disrupt or take parenting time suddenly, without warning, sometimes without reason. And what you got now, instead of a steady, predictable world where you parent your child according to a schedule, You've got this uncertain feeling that every week something's going to be emailed or what about this? Little adjustments. Email, text message. Uh, this Friday, I'd like to pick up Bobby an hour early because we're going to go see this movie that's in town or I'm going to take him to Aunt Irma's. We're going to have, you know, there's she's got pumpkin pie we're supposed to be over there i'll pick him up early is that okay or uncle henry's in town can we switch our weekend so i can have this coming weekend because this that's it and you might think well yeah i want that kind of flexibility it's okay back and forth we go co-parenting is the phrase the catchphrase so and i can tell you a secret i really don't believe in co-parenting i believe in parallel parenting and here's, here's what it's about. So just like on a highway, they paint an orange line down the middle on some highways. Okay, you know that's your side. The other side, on their side. You trust your life to this. 
70 miles an hour, oncoming car. You know you can trust that to be a fixed barrier so that your side is clear, their side is clear. Or imagine you live next door to somebody. You have a house, they have a house. Just for illustration, they have a fence. There's a fence between you. Now, how would you feel if you come home, you're relaxing in your kitchen, and you look out, and there's a party going on. They spilled it out to your house, and, and it's in your yard. Okay, without warning, they've taken over your backyard. In fact, they're trampling your flowers. They're scaring your dog. Well, well, that's like parenting time. And so I've come to this belief. I can tell you, it's not a widely held belief that parenting time schedules should be like a stone wall. Yes, rigidly followed. Now, how does that gain you freedom of action? Kevin, you're saying it's rigid. I want flexibility. Well, the problem is it's an illusion to be flexible because flexibility means that just like my example of your backyard, they just come in and start using your backyard or build a pool in your backyard or take it over. It's not secure. You don't have a feeling of peace and security. So if you rigidly follow the parenting schedule, your child passes between you, sure, but you know what days you have. You know what times you have. You know when your summer vacation is. You know when your holidays are. It's all written very clearly in the parenting schedule. And nowhere does it say, well, if there's a special occasion, then everything's off and we'll just vary it. And let me know and I'll let you know. And Or steady, steady, every week emails, back and forth, negotiating, negotiating, back and forth, trading, banking, swapping. For one thing, if you try to have a new relationship, it'll drive your new partner nuts. Why is your phone blowing up? Why is, why is your ex always calling and texting you? Why is your email all full of messages? You're in constant communication back and forth over small things like changes to the parenting schedule. So the reason I'm saying rigid is so that just as reliable as the sun coming up, you know when your time is. You can plan your life around. And when the other side emails or texts and says, uh, could we switch the weekends because Uncle Robert's in town and we're going to go out for chicken dinner and this? You say, I'd like to stick to the schedule. It's better for everybody. It's better for Bobby and Cindy. It's better for everybody. And that's it. You're just rigid. You just stick to it. And now you may say, well, what if something comes up and I can't, I can't parent my child at that time? Then you have your backup caregiver. It might be grandma. It might be your babysitter. And then you have the backup to that babysitter. So you always have backup. You always can control and cover all of your parenting time. You never ask for a favor from the other side. Never ask them to cover your parenting time. Or pick up from school. Oh, could you pick up today? Because my car is not working right. Could you pick up? No, because once you start trading favors back and forth, once you start burying the parenting schedule, it loses all meaning. And in the end, it's about enforceability. If a court order is not being followed, then it can't be enforced. You can't one day say, well, yeah, that's fine. Switch weekends, sure. I Don't worry about schedule. Uh, go like that, just all loosey-goosey. And then suddenly the other side stops following the schedule, starts taking your time, starts keeping the child on your weekends. Now you come to court and you say, well, this is our parenting schedule. It's being violated. The other side is quick to say, judge, we haven't followed that for at least a year, year and a half. We've just been our own schedule. And if the judge believes that, and that's the truth, you haven't been following it, then well, why all of a sudden? Now you're, you, you've kind of given up your right to enforce it. Well, now it gets more complicated with filing motions and trying to get a new schedule. So there you have it. One of the secrets of stability going forward so that your judgment or your parenting time schedule the wheels don't fall off after a year, year and a half, is to just stick to it. Just stick to it. Which means in the final stages of your divorce or in negotiations over a parenting time schedule, read this stuff. Read the schedule. You can't be one of these people who say, well, whatever. Okay, that's right. Yeah, well, I'll just sign whatever. I'm just tired. And that litigation fatigue where it just makes you sign whatever is in front of you. No. 
because if you think, well, it's yeah, this is I will work it out. Oh, you know, the details don't matter. Then what are you doing? Why are you spending all this time to write the schedule that you really don't think you're going to be following anyway? Anyway, that's one of the ideas, and it's not conventional thinking. But if you'd like to talk to me more about your situation, and I can tell you more of my semi unusual ways of handling these things, I think successful, but they aren't always what you'll normally hear. Please give me a call. 312-493-4241. I look forward to talking with you. I'm attorney Kevin Johnson.